Hi hey guys, how's it going? So I thought I'd just start up um, by making a quick tutorial on how to web scrape the prize picks website using Selenium and um, how to add stats to your document using NBA API. So basically I'll be using NBA API and I'll also be using Selenium and pandas and that's pretty much it um it's pretty easy and um it's also a very good use case for nba api so um i'm just gonna go ahead and get started i am using um pycharm for this project but you can use any ide really visual studio code works um anything really it, it really doesn't matter so uh let's go ahead and open this right here and uh, let's go ahead and start the project. So um, I'm creating a virtual environment, right? Just so uh, my libraries don't get mixed up with my global configurations, but we won't need a lot of packages. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll only need about four or five. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this. So I'm um, great. Uh, we're gonna wanna create a new file called if this lets me uh, just create a new file and we're going to go ahead and name this uh, price picks scraper so let's go ahead and import what we need here so we're going to need selenium actually before i import this let me just download selenium real quick so selenium selenium web driver yeah let's go ahead and download this selenium is in case you don't know, it's a really cool package that lets you to automate your browsers and you can web scrape and all these things. It's super cool, uh, super cool Python package. I really recommend you to uh, look over the docs if you want to um, explore it a bit more. Um, in this use case, we're gonna use it to automate a browser and uh, collect all the props from the price picks website. So uh, let's go ahead and import Selenium. So from Selenium, import uh, web driver, because we'll need that. Um, I'll show you guys how to get that as well in a second. So from the web driver, we're gonna go to common by, okay. And then from Selenium dot web driver, Actually, we won't need this. We'll just um, add it later. We'll also want to import time and import pandas as PD. So let's go ahead and download pandas real quick. And let's just give it a second. All right, so now that we have successfully installed Selenium and pandas, um, we're gonna need to download our web driver. So let's go ahead and download that. I'm using Chrome actually. So let me just double check what version of Chrome I have, but you're gonna need Chromium web driver. Um, you can go ahead and go to this website, chromedriver.chromium.org slash downloads. And um, depending on your version, version of Chrome, sorry, um, you're going to go ahead and download that one. So let me just double check what version of Chrome I have. I use Brave for my browser, but I will automate or I will use Selenium with Chrome because it's a little bit easier. So I have version 112 and yeah, version 112056. Yeah, cool. And it's updating right now. So let me just wait for this update to finish. And um, I will see if the version changes and I will need to download another one. All right, so once you've checked your Chrome version, you go ahead and download the uh, proper Chrome driver version. Um, I already have it, so I'm not gonna download it. So if you're using Linux, go ahead and download Linux. If you're using Mac, I'm using uh, Windows, so I download this one. And what you're gonna wanna do is uh, unzip that and place it in a good location. I have mine in my program files, x64, I have it right here. So here is my Chrome driver. So I'm gonna head and uh, let Selenium know that 
my Chrome driver is here. So program files. Chrome. There we go. Okay, so now that we have designated that, we're also going to create some variables. So web driver dot chrome. I want to designate it. So now that we have this set up, um, let me go ahead and all right. So now that we have um, the path and the driver set up. Uh, we want to put this driver to work. So let's go ahead and go to the price picks website. So um, I want to go to app.pricepicks.com. Yeah, this is it. So I want this link right here. And I will paste that there. And we have that. So now that we have the driver going to price picks, um, I know that there's a pop-up that will show up. So let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. So if we run this, um, it'll work okay, you know. But if you notice, we'll get a pop-up in price picks. So we're going to have to get rid of this, right? Because we want Selenium to go to this website. We want it to X out this pop-up and then cycle through all of the categories in the price picks website so we wanted to x out of that go to nba and then cycle through all of these categories and also take all of these um, names uh, we can do turnovers and the prop line so we can do all these categories right we wanted to scrape all of this so let's go back to our go back to PyCharm and once we are here uh, we want to tell it to wait until the pop-up is present so we can go ahead and just do this uh, web driver wait actually to use web driver wait we're gonna have to import um, import a package real quick so support dot UI import there we go web driver wait and let's go ahead and also import expected conditions so selenium dot web driver dot support i think that's it yeah import expected that's lowercase actually as ec cool so now that we've imported web driver wait we want to tell the driver to wait about 15 seconds or until until um, it detects the X right there so presence of elements located and then what we want to do here is um, tell it to locate it by uh, let's go ahead and do class name and then we'll do close. All right, so once we uh, tell the web driver to wait a little bit uh, until it detects the pop-up, we want it to click on the pop-up and X out of it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to find the element and I find X path to work the best in this scenario. So we do X path comma and then uh, let's go ahead and map this out. So HTML body div. Um, I will show you guys in a second um, where you can find the X path. Um, but let's go ahead and do the three. And then we'll do time dot sleep and we can do it for like 10 seconds. So let me show you guys what I basically did here. So what this does is it opens the price picks website and then we see this pop up right here. Uh, once we get this pop up, it X's out of that and it's working pretty good so far. So let me show you guys where I got the X path for the uh, for the price picks website. So at price picks.com. So hopefully we get the pop up here. Actually, I know why we don't get the pop up on Brave. We don't get it because we are we have 
a lot of history with this website, but let's let me go ahead and go to a private browser and here it is. Great. So um, basically how I found this is I just go ahead and inspect element here and it brings you to the actual uh, div of, of this close button right here. And then as you can see here, uh, the class is called close. So um, that's why we locate it by class name and we just put close here. So it knows that once it detects this in the console, um, the pop-up is, is there, right? And now we have to click on it. So um, we can do the X path, right? Um, what I like to do is I just go here and then I copy the X path and then I go ahead and paste it. And then I kind of just look at um, this right here and I just tinker with it right in this case I think this is I just changed this right here div 3 and then there's a button here we can see uh, where's a button right here yeah there's a button right here and um, I just did a click command on that and it works so uh, once we do that we can go ahead and start creating our table for our players so Go ahead and do uh, players. Uh, let's go ahead and create that table. Once we have that, um, what we want to do now, now that we've X out of that and we've created our table, I want it to click the NBA tab because sometimes it's on MLB or it's on golf or wherever, right? And since I'm only focusing on NBA, I want it to go to NBA tab. So. Um, let's go ahead and go to tell the driver to find the element and we'll get the X path of it. So by X path and let's start looking for this. So let's inspect the element here and we want basketball. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and copy this X path. And then let's paste this here and see. So we have um, the board and then we have a div and the one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Um, so we have a container that contains all of the leagues. Yeah, this is the container. You open this and you select the league and then it goes by leagues and then you can just cycle through the divs here okay so we want this one right here so let's go ahead and what happens if we click this one okay so let's do that instead so let's copy this full path and let's see how it we can how it compares so the id board um Okay. Okay, that's the SVG. It's the picture. So we really just want this right here. So let's go ahead and just copy this right. And then I think we'll use this one right here. So we'll just copy that and then we'll change this. These quotation marks. And there we go. So it should be good so far. Um, we want it to do here is we can do click. Let's try that. Okay, actually, I think I have a better way of doing this. Yeah, so that's because I uh, X'd out of that. But I think I have a better way of doing this. Um, so what I am going to do here is um, just explicitly list it out. So I want the div class that has name. And then we'll close that out. And we go ahead and delete all of this right here because we just want the one that says NBA. So normalize space. NBA. OK, 
Okay, cool. And then we click on that. So let's test this out. Actually, nothing will happen in this case because it's already on NBA by default. So let's do NHL. We'll see if this works. Let's just give it some seconds because we told it to wait around 10 seconds. I'll probably cut that out short and it did switch through it so that's good um let me just put this to four so we don't wait too long and now this works pretty well so um that's great now that we can uh find the nba path we're gonna tell it to sleep a little bit as well so it gives it time for all the props to show up and now let's start coding the uh this container right here for the um, these categories I mean so uh, let's expect inspect element here and then um, we want this right here so we want those categories so it's a stack container this is this is what we want right here this this class stack container class and we want it to cycle through points rebound assists points, rebounds, fantasy score, three point, all of these, right? Cool. So we want it to cycle through all the stats. So we want this one right here. So let me just go ahead and copy this one for reference. Let's go back here and we can start coding this. So uh, let's create a variable, uh, stack container equals, and then we want the web driver to wait until it detects the actual container so we can do that and then e until ec or oh not ev visibility i think there you go visibility of element located um let's do by dot class name and then comma uh, stack container because I think that's what it was called yeah stack container so we wanted to locate by that class name and then I think we're good here so far so it's good go ahead and just add some comments though so um, that's prize picks website wait and clicks on pop up here what are we doing we are clicking on nba tab cool and then here we are waiting until stack whoa stack container is active it's visible actually cool so now that we do that, we can go ahead and set up a variable for the categories. So um, we want to find all of the stat elements that are within the stat container. So these are the points, rebound, assist, all of that. So let's go ahead and do that. Find element by that CSS selector. I found CSS selector to work well with this one because we have uh, stack container right here so we're just going to use that stat uh, container and then we're going to have the text and then we'll do this split new line oh. cool so this basically uh, finds all of the stat elements, like I said, and um, it gets all of these uh, texts, right? All the text inside and it splits it. So now that we have that, we're ready to collect the category. So I'm thinking we could do a couple of for loops. Let me just finish this comment right here.
Great. All right. Okay, guys. So now that we have the categories, we can start uh, creating our for loop. So first we want it to get the categories. So what we want this program to do is to click these categories and cycle through them. So we're able to collect all of this data, right? So we want to start with points, rebounds, assists, uh, fantasy score, all of those, right? So let me go ahead and inspect this right here. So this is a stack container and we want it to do is just cycle through all of these, right? So to do that, we can do a simple for loop and we can do for category in categories. Uh, we want the driver to find the element by dot X path. In this case, I found X path to work really well with this one. And what we'll do here is we'll look for a div with the text that equals the actual category. So I found this to work really well. Uh, we just need some curly break it braces in here and then we'll do category. And then we also want it to click on those categories. So um, I think this should do it. Um, it'll find the element by X path. So it'll do by whatever category it is, right? Um, let's see if, 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 yeah, so it'll be by rebounds or assists or whatever, right? Um, once we have that, um, we have to tell um, we have to tell the web driver to wait. So we'll name this projections PP for price picks. And we'll tell the web driver to wait a little the driver. Uh, we'll make it wait five seconds. We've already done this a couple times until expected condition visibility or actually we'll do presence of element located and then this case we'll do by um, we'll do CSS selector this time because if I am not mistaken these have really easy CSS selectors yeah projection so we'll just do dot projection Oh, misspelled that. There you go. Dot projection, and then all these brack, all these uh, parentheses add up. So that's good. And now that we have that, let's just make sure that this works so far. So we open up the Prize Picks website. We X out of the pop up right here. We select the NBA website, and then we click on. Okay, cool. We clicked on one category. That's that's good. <clears throat> that's working pretty well so far. Um, next, we want to cycle through the projections because we want to uh, scrape data for this projection, this projection, this projection, this projection, so on and so forth. Right? Let me look at how this how this is viewable on the console. So we have a player class and we have a player container. And then inside that we have a projection container. We have projection, projection, projection. Cool. And we have all these great. All right. So I kind of already have an idea of how we're going to do this. So we're going to go ahead and do four projections in projections PP. Uh, what we'll do here is we will get the names. So we want the names. First, so projections dot find um, element by dot class name, and then we will simply just put name here. Because, and then we want to get the text of it, right? Um, and then, what else do we want? So we want the name. Um, let me see. Yeah, we want the name. We also want, I'm not sure we want the date. Um, we do want the actual line here. So we're gonna go ahead and, okay, so it's a span strike for 56.5, cool. So we want the score and the prop, the text of that prop. So let's go ahead and do points. So we can just do projections dot find element by last name and then here we'll do 
me see. Um, here we go. This is what I was looking for. I was hiding here. So pre-sale score. That's the name of the class. So pre-sale score. And then we want to get, since this is, um, we'll just get the inner HTML, actually, attribute inner HTML, right? And then we want the actual prop type, so we know what prop we are looking at. So same thing, by dot class name, and we want, I think it was text, yeah, text. So we want to get that class and then we'll just get attribute and then we'll get the inner HTML. Great. Now that we have that, um, it's looking pretty good so far. Let's just go ahead and run it and see what happens. So, um, it looks like it's working pretty good so far. Um, let me just make a quick uh, dictionary so um, I can tell this program what to store. So we want the name and the name will just be equal to name. I'm going to put a comma there and then we want the points or actually we'll do value because um, not all of these are points, these are rebounds as well. So we'll do value and then we'll put a colon there and that'll be points. Um, and then we'll do prop because we want to know what prop type it is. And then this will be prop type. Cool. If you want to add any others, so if you want to do the date or the opponent, you can go ahead and add that in there as well, but I don't really need it. Um, and actually what I found, yeah, you know what, we'll just do that so far. Um, pretty good. And then we're going to append this to our table over here. So let's go ahead and do PP players uh, dot append and then we'll append player. Cool. We've done that. We're uh, almost done. So um, what do I want to do next? I want to create a data frame for this. So uh, PD dot data frame and then PP players. Cool. Now that we've done that, uh, we can just save this so we can actually, I'll just print it here onto the console. So it'll be a lot easier. Let's see. So unable to locate element method CSS selector. Oh, right here. Okay, cool. So I found the error right here. It was just this dot right here that I was missing. I was looking at this one right here, but um, this was the line that was giving me issues. Basically, I just forgot a period. So if you manage to catch that, uh, make sure to add that. Um, and then let's try this one more time. It should work now. So I'll X out of that and then it will click on the points tab. Okay, cool. And then web element object is not iterable. Okay, cool. So this is in here and it's telling me that the web element object is not iterable. Okay. So I found the error that I was making here. Um, we don't want to do this one presence of element. We want to do presence. Oh, I'm spelling that wrong. Presence of all elements located. So we need this one right here. 
Um, this one was the one, whoops, I didn't add that right there. Okay, yeah, so it's this one right here, uh, presence of all elements located, so we can iterate properly. And uh, once we do that, I think we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and test this out. Cool. So there we go. We see that it is cycling through all of the stack containers and um, it is also scraping the name, the prop type, and the value. So you can see here um, it gets these values and it successfully scrapes them. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, what you can do here as well is, um, let's go ahead and make this a little bit better. So let me just uh, give it a file path to store uh, this in. So we'll create a new folder here. And then we'll just do data. And then we'll copy this path, absolute path. And then we'll do that. And then we'll add double backslashes here. We'll save this as test number one, and then we can save this to a CSV. So, file path, and then we don't want to give this an index, so we'll just do index false. Let's see what this gives us. And like I said, if you want to do any other sport, you could also technically just create another for loop and iterate it through here, through this one. But since I'm just focusing on NBA right now, um, that's the only one I'm using right now. So. so we see that it is iterating through all of them pretty well. And let's check our data folder and it's right here. Let's go ahead and open this and we have them all right here. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. So yeah, that's basically how you web scrape the price picks website using Selenium. Um, if you learned something new today, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions or want to see more videos like this in the future. I'll definitely be posting more videos. Um, and building on these uh, on this series in the near future. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, hope you guys uh, make use of this. Uh, thank you. Also, if you guys want to look at this uh, source code, I will have that in the links below. So make sure to check that out. And yeah, I hope you guys learned something.